uh, Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for talking to us. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. What is the purpose of the launch of the People's Freedom Council of Southern Africa? Um, I attended with different monarchs, but what is the essence of the purpose of it? The reason for the launch of the People's Freedom Council of Southern Africa is quite simply, our country is in a total state of collapse. Most people are unaware of that. So the Freedom Council is going to give a voice to the voiceless with the support of the monarchs in Africa and other institutions and organizations. We live in a lawless country with a completely captured judiciary. And very quickly, I'll just give you some evidence to prove that statement. This is February 2020, submission to Zondo on state capture. No investigation has been done. This is eight. So this, by the way, just to remind our viewers, this is the South African judiciary. This, we are talking about the South African judiciary and the Zondo Commission. Yeah. This is the theft of 178,000 tons of gold mm. submitted to Zondo with evidence and there's no investigation. This is another Zondo document, theft of gold and state capture, no investigation. And shortly after we submitted our last document, three days after that, Zondo had a theft and all their documents and their computers were stolen. This is a police file. This is the theft of 13 billion rand by Nedbank from one client, no investigation. This is Eskim. This is a file that was handed to me almost a year ago. 50 billion rand, corruption at Eskim, no investigation. These are the documents pertaining to South Africa PTY Limited. The country is being incorporated mm. and only a few directors and shareholders mm. live off the proceeds of your taxpayers. This is a personal matter that I've been involved with for a year. Mm. Involves 600 million rand theft from one family mm. and there's been no investigation. So when I say we live in a lawless country, I think that's the tip of the iceberg. You're talking about lawlessness, but speaking about South Africa and the social ills that are facing South Africa today, what is the overview? What is, like, give us perhaps your overview of what's currently happening in South Africa. Well, firstly, this COVID scandemic and the vaccinations is only one tool in the arsenal of the global financial cartel in seeking United Nations resolutions, Agenda 21 to Agenda 2030, to depopulate the planet. Their aim is to genocide the entire planet, save for 500 million of them. I've said this before, they put it in writing. Um, as we know, 4,000 farmers have been murdered, and that's a substantial contribution to the food chain. The dairy herd in South Africa, the current cattle herd, is the same as it was in 1952. And they're going to be um, slaughtering 380,000 head of cattle in Botswana that have got foot and mouth. So there are many um, avenues that they have with which to attack us. The media, it's a psychological warfare on our minds with this continual uh, inculcation subliminally of their program. Wash your hands, go and get vaccinated. COVID is around the corner, Omicron's gonna kill you. There's a war on our economy. And uh, this takes me to the Reserve Bank. The South African Reserve Bank is not releasing and has not released humanitarian and economic upliftment funds for apparently three years. Yeah. I met with someone recently who swore that they had viewed a printout at the Reserve Bank where 2,500 transactions have been blocked from entering the country. So there's a war on food, on, there's a war on cash, there's a, 
a war on just about every single thing, our children, our families. Mm. And uh, if we as a people don't unite and put a stop to this, mm. it's going to be over for us. So you're speaking about war, would you then say that um, government, are we at war here? Would you say government is at war with the people? Are you able to name names? Well, the government is certainly at war with the people. And before I name names, um, they have another divisive agenda and that's the xenophobic agenda. Because for the past four or five years, they've been pushing this xenophobia. Yeah. And our brothers and sisters in Africa know that we are all one. They supported this country and uh, the current leaders that were in exile. So we've always had support from Africa. But their divisive agenda to divide and conquer inside the country is rich, white, black, pink, green, this religion against that religion. But now they're using the xenophobia to divide nations. So when the trouble truly erupts in this country and they've had their way promoting their uh, xenophobic agenda, yeah. north of the Limpopo, our African brothers and sisters will turn their backs on us. So yes, my view is the government is at war with the people. Yeah. Um, just a follow-up question. You have been traveling around Africa and my question is, is there any difference in terms of how things are in Nigeria, in Kenya, and in South Africa, is it all the same? Or things are different in other parts of the uh, continent? I've traveled around Africa, and whenever I return, people ask me what it's like in those countries. And my answer has always been, exactly what is going on here is going on there. Mm -hmm. It is as if they've been given the green light to, to steal whatever they can lay their hands on. Mm -hmm. So what is the most pressing issues that, is, that are facing South Africa today in your view? Well, apart from the um, fourth wave, mm. which is not a fourth wave of flu, mm. it's a fourth wave of economic destruction. Yeah. Um, and that is going to force the 39 million unemployed figure to exponentially increase. Mm. Our next biggest problem in South Africa is um, food shortages and uh, starvation. And I've got a letter from one of the Khoisan elders. Mm. If I may just quickly read this. Sure. Um, Good day, Ambassador. We're an NPO trying to assist our people, the Khoisan. Mm. Currently, there is a massive humanitarian need for assistance in Georgia and the Eastern Cape. And our Khoisan chiefs have reached out to me to secure help for the starving people. The, our current needs are to shelter between 40 and 50,000 people and to feed them. So if anyone has any tents, food, medications, yeah. any clothing, it would be most welcome. But the bottom line is we're waiting for figures to come in from Limpopo. Mm. There are also many people starving there. So food shortages and food security mm. is our biggest problem yeah. at the moment. Mm. And I think you... you Speaking about food security, you mentioned that um, there's a challenge with uh, the killing of farmers, which also will precipitate this whole uh, food security. Would you say that the law enforcement agencies, perhaps the South African uh, police services, incapacitated in terms of dealing with some issues that has to do with farm killings? Yes, they're, they're totally incapacitated. They cannot uh, investigate the farm killings mm. and they cannot even investigate very serious documentation that I've evidenced here today. Yeah. Speaking about the uh, funding, uh, what are you doing about the funding only for feeding the people? Well, we've established the Pan-African Financial Oversight Committee, which very quickly has um, on the board, a judge, masters of law, advocates, uh, lawyers, businessmen and women from London to Johannesburg mm. on the board. Their function is to ensure that any funds that come into the Freedom Council will go into the cloud so that anyone, anywhere, anytime can see that there is no corruption with these funds and they will be applied to the plight of the people mm. and to agricultural projects. 
We understand that uh, on Monday we're going to be meeting with the uh, monarchs. Tell us a little bit about that. What what are you guys? What what will you be talking about? We're meeting with the monarchs on Monday because they are going to be endorsing the People's Freedom Council. So they're going to give us their full support to do what we need to do to release funds and to uh, get the agricultural projects underway. Just quickly before I let you go, if one wants to know more about this um, People's Freedom Council of South Africa, Southern Africa, where do they go to? Uh, is there a website? There is a website. Okay. It's yeah. www.pfcsa.coz. So people can send questions and email? Yes, All right. they certainly can. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Innocent.